So, hey everybody, guess what? New feature. Um, Brett G and myself, Brett G and Jim D. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to start this thing we're going to call Chatterbox. And it's just basically where we uh, chat about modeling stuff. And uh, so this week or this, I don't know whether this is going to be weekly. We're going to do it whenever we can. So, and we're going to go back and forth. So I'm going to publish this one and he'll publish the next one. And uh, so uh, we can share the wealth, I guess. That, that way, if the first one's lame, it's not my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm, okay with that. <laughs> I'm good with failure. No problem. You know, no, no throwing under the bus or anything, but you know. We'll talk like, about that later. <laughs> it's called self-preservation. <laughs> um, so anyway, this week we're going to talk about uh, the subject basically that I came up with was it's not rocket science. And uh, what what brought that on was, um, you know, I, we always see a lot of frustration in the groups and what I mean, we in the community in general with with um, people with their products and stuff. And, and it kind of got me thinking about something when I was in the parts business where I had sold uh, an item to a guy with a Toyota truck, um, which, as we all know, there's millions of those things on the road. And it was one of those situations where like, oh, these things are junk, they don't fit, and this and that, and the other thing. And it's like, okay, man, there's like, I sell a hundred of these a month and there's like zillions of these trucks on the road with these things on them. So it fits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something's not going right somewhere, but it'll fit. Um, and, and, and the guy was really frustrated and, and I understand. Um, um, and that's okay. And it's okay to say, you know, this isn't working for me and to move on and try something else. And um, yeah, I mean, your Boy. model air experience. Oh, what about your Michelin yeah. models paint experience? Was that? that the one? Oh, that didn't go well, did it? See, and that's, no. a, that's a perfectly good example because that's a product that you got people that love it and you got people that are like, this is the worst stuff I've ever tried in my life. <laughs> It yeah, is. you know, that's a thing. That that's one of those things where it's well, first of all, I when I got it down on something, it looked good. It was a little more fragile than I would care to deal with. And um, you know, I'm sure it probably had something to do with the ratios I was mixing it in or whatever, but you know, I was trying to follow. And a part way through it, I'm thinking, okay, wait a minute. I'm having to do too much science and way too much math, which I hate to figure <laughs> this out to get it to work. I mean, it's like, I like to go a little this, a little that. Start, okay, that looks good to me. And go. Yeah. And, you know, because I was looking for, I was trying to find um, an acrylic paint that I could spray in the house without any smell, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it, it just, man, I just could not for the life of me, I couldn't get it to work. And, you know, you watch the videos of people demonstrating how to use it. And it's like, oh, crikey, I could do that with my eyes closed. It didn't matter what I did. And, you know, the, the, the you know, it's the whole thing where, you know, you got your, uh, you got your airbrush and, you know, they're like, one, two, three drops of cleaner, swish, 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 dump. Okay, it's perfectly clean, ready to go. It's like, well, that doesn't work for me. You know, it's like, I got all kinds of chunks and weird stuff going on. So, you know, it just, it didn't work and it works for a junk ton of people. So I moved on. I tried something else. I gave the paint to a guy and, you know, I don't know if he's actually got to try it yet, but, you know, maybe he'll get it to work great and he'll have a new paint to use. Right. Right. And, and that's okay. You know, that's fine. There's enough products out there that, that we can do whatever. I mean, there's, there's a, um, the model air um you know i know isn't your favorite thing i like the stuff the only thing i don't like about it is the durability on it's horrible but other than that i like the stuff yeah um well just like their their um primer when you spray yeah. that stuff on it looks magnificent it looks i mean i because i used to use that all the time but then when i got into you know but that was when i was doing more armor but once right. I started getting into more aircraft and I need to correct something, 
you know, it's like, it, it's practically unsandable. I mean, it, it comes off and, I mean, I guess you can, if you're really super careful, but it, it's not very forgiving. And that's I, when I switched over to Steinle Res. Right. Steinle yes. Res, it's an acrylic right. and it looks great after you put it on, but you can actually sand it, you know, right. or at least I can sand it, but. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't sand it. I love style res. I don't sand it. If I, if I have something where I know I'm going to have to do corrections and stuff, I will use um, like a micro filler primer, like the all clad stuff or something. Yeah. But I, 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 but yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, if it's something that I don't need to do anything with, it's the style res is the, is definitely the way to go. Like, like this, this isn't going to need anything. I yeah. haven't worked on it in a week. I had to put it down. It was getting a little much, but um, yeah, something like that. I'll go straight to the Steinle res. But I, uh, <coughs> um, what was I going to say? Speaking about it not being rocket science, um, you know, there's there's all these different glues and all these different products, and it's interesting to me that that um with all the the paint stuff and whatnot that we have out there and, th and there are different glue products and stuff but this stuff is like universal worldwide yep <laughs> you know? and, and it's it's just interesting because it's in my head it's like it's almost the only thing in the hobby that's that, that's that way yeah it's you know you can find that stuff a lot of people are using that and, and you and you really can't mess up with it either right it i mean it just it works you just use it and it does its thing now the only thing that freaks me out is sometimes you know when you see somebody you know they'll they're going to glue say a whole bunch of wheels on the side of a tank or something right and they'll put you know glue on every single one of them are you thinking about going around Fill around, put another one on there, fill around and, and put it on there. And then by the time, because every time I've tried it, and again, could be climate, but every, you know, after I were to get to about the third one out of five, the, the glue's evaporated, dry, uh -huh. enough, I got to put it back on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you've seen Andy, Andy's lobby of headquarters. Yeah, that's every time I watch one of his videos, I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's the worst part about it is you watch him do that, but nothing ever falls off. <laughs> Right. I mean, I don't know if he's doing some clever editing, but it seems to go together no problem. It's just whenever I do it, nope. Yeah, it's, it's gonna like, dry out. It's some dries like that when it's out. That's like the, the quick setting, the the Tamiya extra thing. Yeah, quick I've never tried that. Now this is really good for certain things, and like for example, I'm working on this uh, Yak One, and it's really good for doing um, fuselage seam lines. Yeah. Especially if it's a, if it's a little, you know, like if if where it comes together, if it's not totally flat, it's like stepped up, right. but you can squish it into 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 place. Right. That's where that, that extra uh, or that quick setting really works well because it it sets up so quick. You only have to hold, sit there and hold it there for just a few seconds, hold it in place, and then you're you're good to go, and you don't have to worry about it, you know, sliding back. Right. Right. I mean, you can do it with the regular extra thing. You just have to hold a little bit longer. So right. it's, you know, but. Right. And, and I, you know, I've, I used MEK. I still have a lot of MEK, but um, I kind of quit using it because I don't have as much ventilation in this space. But if I need to really weld something, MEK, I'll go to the MEK because that stuff is, it's hot. I mean, yeah. the Tamiya extra thin is hot, but the MEK is really hot. <laughs> Yeah, I've never, I've never used it. I've never used MEK. As a matter of fact, a guy asked on, on my channel the other day, he said, he goes, am I crazy? Am I the only one that does this kind of thing? But does anybody, any of you guys use MEK? I said, well, I know there's people who use MEK. I said, I haven't yet. Uh, for instance, um, Matt McDougal, sometimes whenever he's gluing stuff, he uses it quite a bit Yeah. Uh, for yeah. certain things. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's really potent. It's really potent just putting the kit together now obviously there's there's some that are just like off the charts they're just bad you know they're not going to fit together well they're weird they got some weird engineering going on and everything else but then you'll you'll have a kit just like you said with the toyota you know you got hundreds of people 
you know, this week have put these things on their truck and I had a problem, you're having a problem. So maybe you need to rethink it if, if you're not getting it to work and you can't find somebody to install it for you. Right. You run into the same thing with kits and I'll use the, uh, the 130 second scale um, BF109 G10, the one that came out not too many years ago by Revell, Revell. Uh, Germany. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it, I was just getting back in, well, I was just actually getting into building aircraft. I hadn't built any aircraft since I was like in junior high back in, you know, the newest kits were monogram white box kits. Right. You know, right. And uh, so I thought, you know, I, I'd, I'd seen some different things and um, Martin Lamont, international uh, British modeler. Uh huh. He built one of those. And I thought, you know, it looks like a really good kit. And he just built straight from the box. He won't buy aftermarket for him, you know, because I had asked him before, hey, have you tried anything? No, nah, he goes, I like to build them out of the box. That way I know exactly, you know, what kind of value I'm getting for my money because he's a big value to enjoyment ratio, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to try it out. But, you know, in doing, you know, which is probably not a good thing, sometimes I over-research things and you get, you know, oh, this is a great kit. Oh, well, this is the worst kit I've ever built in my life. It's like, who do I believe, you know? <laughs> right. But I put the thing together. And, you know, the same with the, um, the FW190 that came out about the same time from, from Ravel. Yeah. I built that one, too. And one of the things that people talked about was saying, like, this joint here or this thing here, it's just horrible. It's just it's junk. I, you know, might as well throw it away, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay, so, A, if I've built a kit, it's a challenge. Right. To see if I can get it to work. And a lot of times it does work. Because some of the problems, and, and I'm, not, I'm not belittling anybody, you know, right. people just have different building styles, whatever, but didn't have those problems. And then at that point, it's like, well, I don't understand how you had this problem. And I've had a few people ask, well, how did you, this is how I did it. It's like, oh, okay. You know, that makes sense. Right. You know, so. And that's, they, you know, they, that's where, you know, having a body of people to back <laughs> it was good, like, you know um clubs and whatnot and, and you know some people like clubs and some don't and, and a lot of that has to do with the people in the club but but um you know that's that's uh i mean the internet has blow, just blown that completely wide open there's all you know that the thing is well i'll get off on a tangent go ahead and let's let's finish up your thought here well no that was it you know there. it's just a matter of it's just a matter of you know no it's not really rocket science it's just you know think it through right and nine times out of ten and this this could go way off then this could be a totally a whole other video but the right. i uh, the builder versus assembler argument you know <laughs> it's like there's some people it's like you know that there's mechanics and parts changers, yeah. Yeah, you know, there, there's there are some people who just want the kit to fall together, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm, I'm that way, and I'm getting more that way. I just want it to go together. Me too. Shh. Don't yeah. <laughs> After our last video, I was like, wow, he's changed. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's where they just, they don't want to, it, it almost has to be a Tamiya kit in order for you know the whole shake it in the box and you're done right you know when you can still get as good without having to do modifications and a lot of extra work just takes a little bit of forethought and a little bit of planning and get, you know work with it a little bit and because you know it's like i is on those two kits the 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 190 and the 109 the Revell 130 second scale kits i didn't have to use one drop of filler not one but that's because, A, it's a motivation to get things lined up because I hate using filler. Right. And I just wanted to see if I can do it without the filler, you know, and it worked. Right. So that, that, that was just that, you know, it's like, you know, like you say, it's not rocket science. It's just a little bit of forethought, you know, maybe, maybe Briggs and Stratton science. Right. Right. Yeah. Something yeah. a little simpler. I, I, uh, <coughs> um. Oh, what was I going to say? Well, here, talk about forethought. This is uh, the Airfix Tiger One. 
And uh, I showed you the, I sent you the picture today. So yeah. I've been, I've been, so in between, I took a break from the P38, the Tamiya P30 AF. This thing is amazing. I know everybody on the internet has said that. I'm saying it. This is amazing. Um, is it the best thing I've ever built? It's pretty close if it's not. I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I can, I can mess up anything. <laughs> and and we this, all. Is, this is a perfectly good example. So I'm going to hold this up here. Now, this is a German Tiger one. And I am not a tiger um, aficionado like a lot of people are. And this is uh, the Acad or the uh, the Airfix early kit. And what I learned, so I was working on, on this last week because my my wife was off for the week and and my youngest son was off for the week. So I I was doing this while watching movies with them. And. Um, The problem with it is these these wheels right here are inside out. These should be flipped over and be next to this one, and that hub should be sticking up. That's what's wrong with it. Well, um, you could say that's lack of forethought, and it is in a way, but it's really, um, I'm going to blame it on the instructions <laughs> because I, and I'll show you. Um, and maybe this is getting a little off topic, but so that is. Let's see here. Item B. Yeah. And is it focused? There, it's focused. Yeah, it's pretty good. So you don't see the hub sticking out the other side, do you? Uh uh. There's a little hub there in the center. So I assumed that they wanted the flat side out. And, and now I got, um, and now it's back in the box. <laughs> because there's nothing I, I, I guess I could, <laughs> I could cut them apart, but I'm not, I, I'm not a, I'm not one of those guys that's, that glues, that uses glue sparingly. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> these, aren't, these aren't coming apart. <laughs> So, so um, you know that's that's um. What do you do with that? You know, is is that's just that's a a um. If I had built a if I had built a tiger before, I would have probably went. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, but but I haven't. But I haven't. Um. So that's you know that can be frustrating so you know maybe this one is rocket science <laughs> well you know what here's the thing i can laugh at this because i have done almost the exact same thing yeah i got the uh tamia matilda that came out uh, you know it was a new tool matilda and uh they they had two of them the russian one came out later but the one i got was the british version and I was stoked because I like Matildas. They're cool tanks. The, the thing had gotten good reviews. It's to me a tank. So, you know, what, it's going to be awesome. The newer version, not the 70s one. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And it's got these tiny road wheels. And, you know, they're road wheels. There's, there's two, two rows right. of double road. Or there's one row of double road wheel, you know, and then the uh, Matilda tracks for the center guide tee thing. It's kind of a, it's kind of an upside down U. So it's kind of a wide loop kind of looking thing that goes in between those two wheels as it runs down the track. Right. I start slapping this thing together. I'm getting it all going. I'm thinking, man, this is one awesome. I mean, it was fitting great, great. But I thought, man, I'm going to check out these tracks. Why aren't the tracks going on? It's like, man. <laughs> So I looked at it and I'm thinking, well, what's the problem here? Number one, I wasn't I wasn't that familiar with the running gear on a Matilda or that weird humped up right. hollow, right. you know, guide tooth. It's not even guide tooth. It's like just a weird thing. And I was like, uh oh, what I had done is you have the wheel and the wheel, 
with a part that comes out like that on this side, part that comes out like this on this side, and they glue together, forming that nice wide thing. Right. Well, Mr. Bonehead did that. Yeah. I glued, I glued. <laughs> Same idea. I glued it totally yeah. backwards. So it was like, it was too close together. And it's like, there's no way I'm going to fix this. Cause they were on the axles and everything. Right. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what am I going to do? So what I ended up doing is I got my handy dandy. Yeah, and sure. I basically the, the back wheel on the bottom, I cut them all off right flush with the axle just so that guide to thing would would fit oh. <laughs> so so you got you got you got almost a half of a wheel overlapping that humped up you know if you really look at it you can see it but the wheels are so close together you know it's almost invisible and right. it's got those big side skirt armored side skirt things on it so it was no big deal but that's one of those things where it's not rocket science unless you don't read the instructions. And I, I look back at the instructions. It, the bad part was, is it fit really well both ways? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I looked at the instructions and it's like, oh, not hid. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. no, it's not rocket science. You just got to read the instructions. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I said, these instructions, I'm blaming the instructions on this one. No. you're lucky i couldn't blame my instructions they were pretty clear it's just i was just a knucklehead got got overzealous in putting it together so you know i think a lot of it too <laughs> is just as you build more and more and more you get really kind of used to the way things go together and you know i often tell people back when we were kids i mean the the parts count was so low on stuff how often did we look at the instruction sheet? You know, you whip the parts out, cut them off the sprue and throw them out on the, the table. And it's like, I don't need an instruction sheet to put this together. Yeah. Nowadays you got 1600 parts or something. It's, it's different. But what my point was going to be that, that you, um, um, you, you learn over time how stuff's engineered and goes together. And, and uh, you know, until we got to that point here in the last 10 years where, it seems like these engineers are trying to figure out how many parts they can break something down into just to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? but, but, um, so, you know, that's helpful. And, but that, that contributes to things like that too, because you're just like, oh yeah, you know, exactly. this like this, well, like you're saying, well, it doesn't really fit well this way. So it's got to go this way. Well, yeah. no, not necessarily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it both ways. And I picked the wrong way. Right. Right. Um, I mean, you kind of touched on aftermarket parts and, and as most everybody knows, I got this massive PE V29 project going um, that, that is, um, that thing's going to make it to Las Vegas in August, one way or the other. That will be at the Nats, hopefully in one piece. <laughs> we'll, right. see. we'll see. I'm committing to that. And I have some other other things. Um, I, I have no, no, no. Uh, um, no dreams of that getting anything but i just it's going to be cool and it's big and it's you don't see them very often bill don't see them hardly at all anymore you know yeah so it'll be just something cool for people to look at um but um the whole reason i started that was to basically prove to people that pe wasn't rocket science yeah <laughs> that it's it's tedious um but it's not it's not scary you know i a lot of people kind of come off like oh that stuff there's no way i'm ever going to be able to do that and this and it's like i had the, my pe experience up until that point had been the grenade screens on a on a german armored car oh you wow know, basically two yep. pieces two flat pieces that i cut off of a cut off of a fret and put on Yep. On the top of the turret. Wow. That's that was my PE experience up until that point, up until I started that. Um, and that's and that is the whole 
That's I got the whole um, uh, Big Ed set. I got everything that Edward made. Wow. Um, and it's a lot of it's a lot of brass, <laughs> a lot. Wow. Um. So yeah. So. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get back on that and, I'm, and I'll be doing videos on that and going through the PE stuff and just like I said, you know, it's not rocket science. You don't need, you know, $150 PE bending tools and whatnot. It, it, I mean, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with having that, but you don't need it. One yeah. PE yeah. tool. That's it. Yeah, I got I actually have these. And these are both smooth jaw. Yeah, the, the only reason I got this one is because I couldn't find some smooth jaws that I liked. Right, this is a square tip and this is, um, but but I also just used, um, I use single edge razor blades and steel rulers. Yep. You know, um, and believe it or not. Where this is, is what I've got for my PE cutting tool. Exacto with one of those, uh, used up for plastic but still good for cutting pee one of those titanium right. x exacto blades you know the really cool ones that come in the you know more colorful packaging and they, you know but they're supposed to be titanium or something it right. works great for pe because it lasts and i i used to have you know all this stuff you know i'd get out my tile and I'm, i just cut it right on my cutting mat now and i've never been right. a piece yet i, so I next just a piece of scrap wood usually yeah. And then, and then, yeah. And then I just, I, I just use a regular exacto blade and then I just sand it with a regular sanding stick. And I also use this to bend parts. Ah, just, there you go. A hinge. A door hinge. <laughs> it's just a door hinge. And you can put the thing in there and set it down on a flat surface and put your thumb on it. Yep. And, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever works. It's a, yeah, you don't need to go spend one hundred fifty dollars on a PE tool. You can. Yep. But yeah, my first foray into photo edge. Oh my goodness, I I think I built. This was real early on. I built um, the first armor kit that I built. Getting back into the hobby was the uh, the old Tamiya. Um, mobile wagon, yeah. The four, the four barrel with the sides that fold down. That I didn't know until you know I started doing a little research on it when I was building it. I, I had it since the eighties. My my mom bought it when she was in Fresno, visiting my grandparents. Yeah. Brought it home. Was like cool. So I put it in with a few kits I had. I was going to build, and then you know things happened, and I didn't pick it up again until like two thousand thirteen or whatever it was. Right. And uh, but I built that. I built. Think I, I think the next one I built was the old monogram screaming Mimi that my son bought for me because, you know, I loved that kit so much as a kid right. and I wanted to build it again and I loved it just as much the second time. The third kit I built after getting back into the hobby was a Bronco Staghound. And wow. I'm telling you, yeah, it came <laughs> with a junk ton of photo edge and the plumbing for the, for the external fuel tanks yeah were all these little teeny tiny i mean really well molded and really well engineered i guess it can be hit and miss with bronco but i lucked out on this one because i actually got it put together and i actually used all the photo edge on it and that included like threading through buckles and all this kind of weird stuff but i thought you know what other people do it i right. bet you i can do right. it right so i tackled it and it worked now, right. sometimes photo etch gets on my nerves because, you know, sometimes I look at photo etch and I'm thinking, okay, why would they do photo etch? Just like uh, the levers in like, a, um, like say a throttle quadrant on a B17 or something. You got all these yeah, cool, it looks cool from the side, but when you look at it, it's these like flat things. <laughs> yeah. It's like, aren't, aren't the knobs supposed to be round on those? And, but that was my first foray into, uh, into photo etch. And I, I guess that's a perfect example of it's not rocket science because I just, you know, I'd seen stuff and heard the horror stories and heard the good stories. I thought, you know what, I could probably do this as long as I don't drink a cup of coffee and, you know, get all wired and it, it worked. Talking about throttle, throttle quadrants. Yeah. B29. 
Look at all those level <laughs> slots. Man. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. Um, they're supposed to go in from the bottom. And I, I exactly the same thought you just had is like they're flat. These things aren't supposed to be flat. I'm going to use pins. I'm going to find some really small pins with some small pin heads, and I'm going to use those. I've never been able to find pins that will go in there. They're that small. Yeah. Um, so well, I now guess what the, I need the, to do is I need to debond this, which isn't really a big deal, and so that I can put the levers in, the PE levers in, and, and put it back. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, um, some some people have, now some of them they're not too bad because it's like say if it's on the on the uh, the side of the cockpit, like say a single engine fighter, yeah. and they the the manufacturers at least taken the initiative to punch the knob from the back so it bulges out yeah the, you know it, it's it's not even really a semicircle but at least it looks round and when you're looking inside of a built cockpit you know it looks like it's supposed to you know throw some red paint on it or whatever and you know you're good but right yeah the flat ones but yeah we'll see i mean you know we'll get there one way or the other um but yeah, you know, the, the, I, 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 uh, um, resin is another thing that, uh, um, you know, gets some people kind of all worked up. And, and resin, if you don't have an allergy to it, like I do, <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's not, it's, it's really not that hard to work with. It's, it, once you get it off the pouring blocks and stuff, I don't know how much of it you've done over the years, but I did it, uh, a F4 Phantom cockpit, an old, I think it was an Aries cockpit or maybe it was a black box, I don't know, years ago. And um, it took a long time to get it off the pour blocks and stuff and and, and to uh, get the fuselage all carved out and stuff to get it in there. And, but it really wasn't hard. It was just tedious. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, so I'm always kind of, you know, go for it. It's yeah. not, it's, it's not, you know, you, all you got, it's, it's, it's time consuming. This, you, you just have to understand when you're going to go do something like that. It's time consuming. It's not yeah. hard. And those are two different things. Well, and, you know, like you say, not rocket science, sometimes something you think that is going to be hard or out of your, capabilities or out of your wheelhouse however you want to put it <clears throat> like i for instance peter person sent me uh, a, a, a stug three and four or five years ago uh -huh. and it was um one of those uh dragon expo kits dragon expo 07 that he had picked up and it's just it's just like a one-off kit very little of what's in the kit is shared with other kits so it's like you, you don't you don't get a kit a typical dragon kit with 600 sprues that on one sprue you may only use two pieces off of it right i mean i've got a drawer down here a stack that thick of t34 parts from a failed project but right. um the building part wasn't the thing but it had a, it was a particular guy's tank and it had a particular look and Whenever I first got it, I hadn't done any of the hairspray check technique yet for, okay. for doing a winter whitewash. As a matter of fact, I hadn't done winter whitewash. And I was like, oh, man. And I wanted it to turn out, you know, back in the old days, I just cop out and it's like, eh, well, I'll just do it in a different color scheme and say it's something else, you know. But right. this one I wanted to do, I mean, somebody had given it to me, put some thought into it. I thought, yeah, I want to do this right. So I sat on it because i thought man i just this this winter whitewash it's just got me freaked out you know and this hairspray and all this kind of stuff and so the first thing i tried winter whitewash was one of those um hobby box one of those 148 scale shermans okay that you could get a hobby lobby for a while so i got one of those oh, yeah. and this would be perfect it's small it's cheap if i screwed up who cares right and it worked out 
It's like, wow. But I still wasn't confident enough to tackle. So I did, you know, that's why I got the T-34s for a group build that somebody was doing. Who was that? I don't remember if it was Greg Riley or one of those guys, but T-34 group build. So I bought this T-34 and that's what I was going to use as the basis of my practicing for the Stug. And I never even got to paint on that kit. It's like, <laughs> chuck it. No, it's uh, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> so, you know, and I did some stuff on some aircraft, like, you know, walkways and stuff like that, doing the hairspray chipping technique. And then finally, um, Marcus of Scale Bench Modeler and Joachim of Yorama Model Bow. Right. Those two guys, they were doing, and they sent me an email, said, hey, you want to join in on this thing? I thought, you know what? I got the perfect kit for that. I'm going to bust out that stew and I'm going to do this thing. I did it, and I'm thinking, why did I sweat this so much? <laughs> you right. know, it's right. not, you know, it's like, it's not as, as weird and difficult as it may look, it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, it's like, just, just get in there, just tackle it, just do it. You know, you, you know, I mean, kind of taken off of that. I, I think part of it is um, you have to, at least for me, when I, when I started getting back into it, so I, 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 I had kind of, I had started a monogram B17 and, and that I kind of got disinterested and life went on and it kind of ended up going away. And then finally I was like, okay, I've got time. I'm really going to kind of come back to this. And I had a, uh, to me, a P47M kit, um, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's kind of, for me, you know, that's a $50 kit. That's, that's bucks, <laughs> you know, in yeah. my head. Oh yeah. And, and so here I am, it's like, I haven't really, I haven't completed anything in, you know, a decade and, and, uh, and I was really just like, I really don't want to screw this thing up because it's not a $15 monogram kit, you know? And yeah. uh, finally I, I was, so I was scouring the internet looking for, for stuff about it. And I came across scale spot, Gary over at scale spot. And I sent him an email because he had built one. He had one up on the site and uh, I sent him an email and said, hey, I'm just getting back into things. I got this kid. I'm really afraid I'm going to mess it up. And he basically, he sent me an email back and I still have it. But he sent me, a, basically, he just said, just build it. <laughs> right? Yep. You know, just so what? Just build it. And, and I did. And, and really, what I, what I learned, I mean, from that and, and going forward after that was, and, and it's it's not like something it wasn't revolutionary to me because I knew it but I just forgotten it type of thing you know because I hadn't done anything so long and I, and I got so tied up and I really don't want to mess this up you're gonna mess it up you're gonna yep. mess it up I'm gonna mess this up you know and 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 the trick is um, knowing how to recover from that and 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 and, and being okay with that you know and and once you get past being afraid of of screwing it up <laughs> yeah um, it's it's a lot easier oh it's, yeah you're you know be, be forgiving of yourself and just go with it and yeah. uh, uh, you know what is it bob ross and his his happy mistakes or whatever yeah you know? yep. well it's the truth be told i mean you can get done with a kid and you look at it and you're thinking oh my what did i what was i thinking there what was i doing you yeah. show it, nobody's going to notice. No, I mean, you're going to show, I mean, there's, there's two things. You're, you're going to show your buddies online, either whether it's, you know, via YouTube or a forum or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And they're going to look at it and say, wow, that's really cool. You know, whatever, you know, and that's it. The right. people that see it in your, in your cabinet, you know, it's your friends and family, you know, they don't, I mean, they oh, don't know a P51 at. from a 10, you know, BF 109, and they look at it, it's like, why did you do that? Yeah, it's like, wow, that looks really neat. You know, it's like it looks like it's really dirty and, you know, right. so you may see your mistakes and everything else. So, 
in the end, it's just, just do the thing and just, you know, for good or ill. And when you get done, you know, it's done and you're looking at it and you think, especially after you do screw something up, but you know, it's the force for the trees thing. Right. It's like when you, when yeah. you look at that one thing, it's like, Oh, that, that's, that's just lame. That's stupid. But when you're looking at the whole thing, it's like, but actually it turned out really cool. I'm stoked, you know? Yeah. It's just, Get in there and do it, and don't be so clean and worried about it. I, I, you know, I think I'm trying to think of, you know, something that I built that came out much that was that shocked me. Yeah, you, you know, you ever build? You get done with the build, and you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, you're like, wow, I did that. <laughs> um, and gee, I don't know. I, I would have to. I would really have to think probably that FW 190 that I did not too long ago. Yeah. Um, I was really, really, really <coughs> happy with that. Yeah. And, and it wasn't, it wasn't something I didn't feel like I really put a whole lot of effort into it, you know, because it's, it's not my normal subject matter, I guess, or, you know, it's, it's, it was, um, but yeah, it was just like I'd done with it. And I stood back and I was like, wow, that looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I and I and I can't say that I that I gave it really as much attention as I probably do a lot of other things. And maybe that's why it came out so good. I yeah. just kind of did it and didn't think yep. about it, didn't put a whole lot of thought into it, and just and just went with whatever was working. Um, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think that um, I think that there's there's two two ways because I've had those kids too where it's like you know I, I just I've been working on such and such I've been doing a lot of thinking about everything and it's like okay I need something just to uh, what I was listening to a podcast the other day palate cleanser they called oh, it yeah. and it's just like I just want to build something and just not think about it just build it do it paint it but whatever and you get done it's like wow that was really cool right there's yeah. that way just like you're talking about right and then for me another way that where i end up a little more stoked with it is if i go in with like working off of a photograph a specific vehicle in a specific setting a specific way with a decent photo that you can see what you're looking at and that you can have other references to pull from for certain things for example that um what kit was that? I think it was, was it Academy? It was, uh, I think it was, I think it was an Academy M4A3 Sherman with the T-34 Calliope rocket launcher. Okay. okay. The rocket launcher itself was from the old Italeri kit, or as it was called back then, Italieri. Yeah. yeah I was, had that I, in it. I say Italeri, but yeah. Yeah, it, well, it, you know, now that's what it's, that's the way it's spelled on the boxes. Back then, okay. it's like, what kind of tongue twister is this? Is you know? I think that's what I called it back in those days. Italian. Yeah. But I picked that specific kit for a specific photo of a specific unit that supported my grandfather's unit in World War II at some point. Right. And I'm like, that's what I'm building. That's what I'm going to do right there. And I had a really good photo of it. So, I went in knowing exactly what I wanted to accomplish. Now, whether or not I accomplished it exactly the same, that's something entirely different. But I knew what I wanted going into it, so it made it a lot easier to reach that end thing. Because there's been times when I've like, oh, I'm going to build this tank here, but I don't really have a specific thing in mind. So right. it's like, well, how am I going to weather it? So I start weathering it and it's like, well, that's not kind of working. It doesn't look really that cool. So I'm just shooting from the hip. I don't have anything to pull. From. I'm not using anything to right. pull from, Right. you know? So, so like you said, it's like either you just go in and just do it, just have some fun with it. And when you get done, you're like, holy smokes, that's awesome. Or you go in with something specific and you know you come up with a good you know a result that you're proud of or whatever right right yeah it's it's um it, it's almost it's almost like you know either don't think about it or <laughs> but 
I don't want to say overthink it, but go in with a super specific idea in mind. Do one or the other. Just don't right. go in half cocked and just, you know, hope it turns out. Right. Uh, the one, the models that I've built that have turned out the best have been ones that are like very specific. You know, even, even if you're going in building something just from the box art or from the, from the instructions, sometimes that's not enough if you're wanting to achieve a certain result. Right. Unless you're right. just, you know, like you go in not thinking about it and then you, boom, you're done. It's like, holy cow, that's awesome. Right. You know? Yeah. So again, you know, not rocket science, just pick something and just go in guns blazing and do it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, don't overthink it. Yeah. I think a lot of that comes, that comes with just <laughs> building kits, you know, and a lot of people have said this and it's absolutely true is, you know, the only way to get, to get better, quote unquote, better, whatever that means is, is, uh, I guess the only way to improve is, is to build kits, you know, um, um, you can watch guys like us all day long on, on YouTube, but until you actually put your hands on the plastic, you know, you're getting minimal value out of that. Well, you're getting entertainment. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I think I'm entertaining, but <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, you know, I'm amusing myself anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, you, 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 you have to build and, and I don't, um, you know, and I don't mean go out and buy 15 Revell kits and just, and, and torture yourself. Um, I know that's what people, well, you know, this too, because we've had this discussion where, you know, like, you know, oh, you know, go out and buy this and go buy a, uh, 30 year old monogram kit and a monogram B26 and, and you'll, you know, hone your skills on that. Yeah. You don't have to put yourself through that torture. There's nothing wrong with starting, you know, even with something like this P38. They, I mean, if you got, if, you, if you're willing to spend the money and that's where you want to start, there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. Um, and, you know, it doesn't mean you haven't paid your dues or whatever you want to, you know, however you, somebody wants to put it that doesn't mean that yeah. at all yeah at all. and and um you know I, it's it's um what was i gonna say it's if you i mean people that have been doing this for a long time and, and know the different kits and and and, and whatnot you know, yeah, they're going to look at something, you know, a 40 year old kid and that somebody's just taken and just done an immaculate job with and, and look at that and recognize there's a lot of time and effort and stuff into that. Yeah. And they're going to, yes, they're going to look at that differently and go, wow, you know, that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean this isn't impressive. You know, right. you know, it's, 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 just, it's a different, it's different and, and that's okay. It's, it's like a, it's like a 2021 Corvette versus the guy that built his, uh, his 63 Corvette out of a box of parts, you know, over a 10 right. year period. It's, they're both awesome. <laughs> you know, it's so, you know, don't, don't let that kind of get into into your thing and I, I saw something the other day somebody made a comment and it kind of really it rubbed me the wrong way it was um somebody was talking about how bad a kit was and somebody popped in there and said well is it as bad as the monogram b26 and i'm like hey <laughs> yeah it's what like people mean? make a benchmark out of something it's like wait yeah. i built that i built that what are you talking about <laughs> I mean, it's not great, but I built a lot worse. If you built the that that, that one in the monogram P sixty one, they seem yeah. to get the the worst of it. Well, and I got both of them sitting here. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's funny. <laughs> but um, yeah. So you know, the thing is, is is just you know, don't don't um, don't. It's not a job. It's it's. You know, it's not something you have to kill yourself over and and just and just go with it. I that 
a Gary scale spot. I mean, that, that was just, it just sounds simple, but it, you know, just build it, just quit yep. worrying about it and just build it. Yep. And he was absolutely right. You know? Anytime that subject comes up on, cause I, I, I listen to all these podcasts now. They're great for when you're sitting at the bench or especially when I'm working, cause I work by myself and I don't have to deal with other people too much. Right. I got my one of my earbuds in and I'm listening to these modeling podcasts. And that's if the subject ever comes up, it's like, get it through your head. You're never going to be good enough to right. do that. Kid. So just build it. And when you get done, you'll probably blow yourself away. Right. And not only is it, you know, you've done it, but you've like gained a little bit of confidence. It's like, well, hey, I can do this kind of thing. You know, just just do it. Right. Just do right. it. Just, just do, do it. it. <laughs> OK, you know what? I got one more rocket okay. science topic. OK. There you go. Airbrushes. Airbrushes. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what that boy, you know, it is just. You know, I know everybody knows it's like, especially when people are just getting into it. When I was just first getting back into the hobby and I was doing the airbrush, I was the same exact way, man. People want exactitudes. They want, it's like, okay, so, and I'm not even going to get into the color thing because that's an episode all by itself. And that's probably going to be one of mine coming up real soon. There you go. But, okay, I'm going to be using X brand of paint. Okay, what is the ratio that I should use? whatever to, to get this stuff to work right and the funny thing is okay number one you got a new person okay number two that's never done it before number two it's just like i used to say a whole lot in in my videos and i still bring it up once in a while the 10 by 10 rule 10 people are going to give you 10 completely different answers that's yeah. just the way it is and not one of them's wrong unless you know they tell me oh well i use you know i use garden mud to thin my pain you know okay that's wrong you know but <laughs> right. but you know they'll you'll have one guy it's like well i i use you know when using brand x of paint i use 34 percent paint to x amount of thinner but then i add a drop of dove tears to it and but you know everybody's got their right. secret formula right and right. i just you know, I've thought about it before, but somebody said something on one of the podcasts recently that is just, uh, as a matter of fact, it was the guy, I think John at um, Model Paint Solutions. Uh -huh. He was, he was interviewed on one, on one of the, uh, on one of the podcasts. And he said, you know, it's kind of, you can kind of get a general idea, but I mean, just like the thing I mentioned earlier with Shane Smythe, he's in Ireland. I'm in Southern California. We have two totally different climates and everything else. And that's going to affect how things work on your bench. Right. So, you know, you got some guy in, you know, Florida, he's going to have a different situation than a guy in, you know, Washington, whatever, you know, right. so you can't, you can't all that say this, you can't make it rocket science. You know, the best, the best, when people have asked me, I say, look, do this. If you're going to try paint and, you know, I always tell them I'm not an expert, but this is what I've come to the realization. Whatever paints you have locally, grab some of them, grab a bottle of each and just work with them and see which one seems yeah. to work the best for you. Right. You know, because there is no formula for using an airbrush because, you know, you, they have the dial on my thing here has a wide range of pressures for a reason. Right. You know, the nozzle and needle is a different size on my different airbrushes for a reason. It's like there's no set in stone answer. You know, it's like you just got to you just got to get in there, mix up a little bit of paint, spray it, see what happens. You right. know, ask advice. I mean, say, look, I, I've, I've done this and I'm getting this weird splatter business. It's like, OK, maybe dial your pressure back a little bit or dial your pressure up a little bit maybe add a little bit more thinner, you know, whatever that kind of advice is okay. But when you get into these, you know, it's like, Oh, well, because I myself early on, you know, just like with Shane, 
it's like, well, I use, I, I use Vallejo. I use a little bit of their uh, flow improver and they're thinner. And this is the way, I, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm doing the same thing. Right. Why is it coming out? In, you know, why is a, a big old paint booger shoot out every once in a while? Well, it's because it's hotter here and it's curing in the cup really quick and then getting sucked through, you know? Right. So, you know, it, that's one of those things where, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty complicated and a precision bit of tool here, but it doesn't have to be rocket science unless you make it that way. Just get in there, mix up a little bit of paint and try some stuff, you know, right. and then from there you'll fine tune it. Right. I, you know, it don't, don't go off of what some, you know, that would have been like me asking Shane one time, I, you know, I've got, you know, I've got a bottle of, you know, uh, paint here and I was, you know, how, well, this is what I do. It's like, excellent. Okay. Now I know what to do. So I'm going to buy the whole line of paint. So right, I got the whole yeah, line of paint yeah. and then it doesn't work. Right, so I'm right. like, well, I got a drawer full of paint. You know, it's, it, it makes my drawer look really cool. And it's real pretty with all those different colors, but you know, they're basically just taking up space. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, so like, you know, the airbrush is one of those is, I think it's really good because it's a mechanical thing. It's not rocket science. It's just a matter of getting in there, keeping it simple, thinner right. paint, see what happens. Don't start messing with additives and all that other kind of stuff till you see what's going to work pretty well. Then you can fine tune it, you know, but again, like. If you need to. If yeah. You, you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer. In, <clears throat> find something that works for you. Stick with If it works, it works. Yep. You know, I mean, there, there's no, that's, you know, there's, there's no reason to change. Well, you know, as, as all of these products, these products, come out you know there's there's no there's no reason to go chasing all these products you don't have to um, you can you know but but if you find something um you know i i i love my pastel chalks i love them i know there's pigments and all that stuff out there but you know what these pastel chalks have worked for me forever and they still work fine yep <laughs> you know and well you know, I mean, I, I, I like the, I like panel liner, you know, and it's not that I can't mix up a, an oil wash or whatnot, because it's all it is, but this is, it's here and it's in a bottle and it's got a little brush. It's ready to go. And yep. it, I just, I just, is it the most economical thing? No. Um, you know, every, every, everybody's got their thing. I, it's, it's, um, but, but what I will say is, you know, there's 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 things that that work together that everybody kind of knows works together, and sometimes that's just the way to go. When I did my when I did the test on the panel liner on the different clear coats, you remember that? Yeah. A while back, I, I mean that was that was a huge that was a huge thing for me when you know because that that uh, I'd been using the the future for so long and whatnot. And that that uh, the the Tamiya X what is it X twenty two, the clear yeah. the gloss clear. Yep. Um, and the way that that this stuff just stayed in those stayed in the panel lines and came off the flat surfaces just so easy and I was like wow yeah okay. yeah I've been I've been working way too hard for way too long. Yep. <laughs> you know and and. And that's just one of those things. It's like, well, that's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. You know, that's that's the right way to do it. And and well, in that case, yeah. I mean, it it was better, but um, yeah. I used to see some when I was first getting back into it. You know, it's like the internet can almost be, you know, almost a bad thing in some ways. Because I mean, I'm looking at the way some of these people are doing things. So I'm trying all these different things. Like I got some of the Vallejo um, acrylic uh, washes, right? Yeah. yeah. Forget it. I the stuff was horrible for me, yeah. and I, I, I the reason I got it is because I'm watching guys on videos and they're just right. working magic with it. You know, it's like when they get done with it, the vehicle actually starts up and drives off on its own. It's pure <laughs> magic. You know, with me, I put it on there. I've got tide marks everywhere that won't come off. It has to be repainted or whatever right. you know uh I, I got into um pigments and i'd seen something somewhere 
and uh, some guy, you know, used, uh, got some pigment binder. It looks like watered down PVA glue, which I think it is, but, and mixed up and made his mud and everything. I'm thinking, okay, that looks really cool. Well, then I see Vallejo acrylic thick mud. I thought, well, that'll eliminate step. Yeah. Tried this, hate it. I really? don't like it. it. To me, it looks horrible. I can't get it to look right. You know, it's like I, I get it on there, and all it looks like is I've glopped some, some uh, tan, some light brown mud colored right. silicone all over my thing. It just, it, to me, I like the result I got making my own out of the pigments. Right. Because I can control the consistency of it more. And I'm sure you can do that with this. I just, you know, I tried it a few times, like, whatever, I'll just stick to my old thing and mix right. in those pigment binders. And when it dries, it looks more like clumpy mud. You know, right. and it just gives me an effect I like better. It's just one of those things you got to try maybe a couple of different things till you find. And I've discovered, and what I've started doing is whenever I do a model, whatever item I pull out of my drawer to use, I put it in the corner of my desk, neatly off to the side. Right. You know, because don't like a messy desk. Right. But I keep it out. That way I can see what I'm using. And it's funny because every time I build a model, it's always the same items are in that corner. Yeah. And it's not a whole lot of different things. Right. You know, so I'm looking at it and it's a good exercise for me myself not to just constantly be trying the latest and greatest. Right. You know, basically I just replenish the supplies that I have. And if I have something that sits in my drawer, it's like, I haven't used that thing since I first got it. I have a friend here local and say, like, hey, you want to try this product? He's like, well, yeah, if you don't mind, here, take it. You know, it's either that or I throw it away. And I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, so again, it's it's just, it's one of those things, you know, don't make it harder than it has to be. Just, you know, work with what you have and then, you know, experiment a little bit, but right. don't feel like you have to do, because I've seen some people do stuff on videos. It's like, how do they get that result with what they used? Right. You know, it's like they turn out this phenomenal looking model and they've got, you know, they used, you know, uh, who is it? Somebody, I can't remember who it is. Somebody just goes out and, oh, well, Hamilcar, Bar uh, uh, Michael, um, Hamilcar Barkas, he does that. He's, this is garden dirt. I go out in my garden and I get this and I mix it with some glue and that's my mud. Yeah. yeah. What better to use to make mud than mud? <laughs> right, right. You know, it is. It looks like mud because it is mud. Exactly. You know, so it's like don't. You know, it's people don't need to. Again, yeah. you know, they don't need to get in there and whatever they. Oh, it's like that's that's the only way I can do it. It's not going to turn out right if I don't have this or that. You right. know, no, you can do just fine with what you got on hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm the same way. I got all this stuff, and this isn't this isn't all of it obviously back here behind me but um most of that stuff back there i don't use that's why yeah. it's up here because i don't use it <laughs> i mean some of it i do but but most of the stuff that's back there is there because it's if i'm using it it's over here yeah um but what i was going to say is kind of taking off of that and talking about the internet i'll tell you what just drives me crazy and really why i came back to do youtube videos um is people out there suggesting or you know suggesting th doing things that that i know aren't going to work and it's like you've never done that you should not be telling people yeah things. do not tell people to do things that you haven't done yourself exactly <laughs> do not do that that's a recipe for disaster yeah you know <laughs> and, and it, you see it all the time all the time it is it in my head it is perfectly okay to go this might work i don't know i haven't tried it right but it might you might want to think about it that is completely different than saying hey do this you know yep. because because maybe you got you know somebody who who you know this is their yearly model budget this one kit and and you tell them to do something um you know, and and they ruin it. I mean, that's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, yep. that's a horrible. That's a. Uh, you know, maybe it's just me. I mean, but that the 
that's a you know that's a horrible thing that's a horrible yeah. thing in my head and, and and i'm not saying it's malicious you know it's just yeah you know i i will if if i'm going to suggest something that i haven't tried i will just flat out say i have not done this yeah i don't know if this is going to work but yeah i think it might yeah this is why but um that's really what got me back into it because I saw all kinds of that stuff and I was just like, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And, and, uh, cringe worthy, man. What's that? I said cringe worthy, some of that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, oh. You know, and, 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 uh, um, and it's just gotten worse with all the products that I've got. There's so many products and stuff. You know, it, well, like I said before, you know, find, find what works for, for you and, and and go with it. And and I would say, um, you know, you don't. Um, there are there are models out there that are very methodical, and they build every single model the same way. Yep. Um, and and that's fine, but you know there's 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 some there's some pleasure in doing in being creative and kind of mixing it up once in a while and and trying some new stuff and whatnot and once you get experience you can kind of look at something and go that's not going to work yep. <laughs> you know yeah. you, you know i i'll tell here's here's an interesting thing so when i um probably my second or third model when i got back into things and this wasn't something that I didn't know. It was just, I wasn't thinking. And um, I had, there was a, it was another to me, a P47 actually different. It was the, the silver, the natural metal and red one that I did, but um, I was cleaning something or something off of the body or something. I don't remember what off of the nose behind the cowl. And I grabbed a rag and I dipped it in lacquer thinner, right? Well, I know not to do that, right? I know lacquer thinner melts plastic, <laughs> but it was just one of those, didn't think about it, you know, just, yeah, I had a little thing of lacquer thinner sitting there and I took a rag and I put it in there and I started scrubbing and then it started kind of sticking to the plastic you know, and I'm like, and at first it doesn't register, you know, and, and then all of a sudden your brain goes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. okay, it's, it's just, it's just like the wheels. I can laugh right along with you. Did the same thing. <laughs> Had a figure. I wanted to take the paint off the face because, the, you know, what do I do? I get my bowl of lacquer thinner, big old brush. It'll hold a lot of fluid, slopped it all in there, let it sit a few minutes. It's like, uh oh, it's like. <laughs> It looked like that guy in Indiana Jones. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. That's what happens when you open the, the Ark of the Covenant. The You're not the supposed Covenant. to. Your face will melt. <laughs> All right, Jim. Well, that was pretty fun talking about uh, rocket science. So hopefully, uh, hopefully our audience at least will be awake enough to be sure and turn off their computer after watching this. Right. No pitch for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that was fun. And uh, I, even just in our conversation day, I've already got some seeds planted for other other topics, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, it was great talking with you again. And all yeah. you people out there that watched it, we hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you have any you know questions or anything, I always say this at the end of my video. So I'm going to say it at the end of Jim's video. <laughs> if you have any questions, put them in the comments section down below and he'll get back to you as quick as he can. <laughs> but yeah, we might have some, you know, some additional thoughts if you have any questions. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for joining us in here. Joining us here on Chatterbox with Jim and Brett. Yeah, as usual, take care of the people you love. See you all next time. Bye.